Hello people, and welcome back to another episode of City Skylines Modular Builds. I hope you're having a wonderful day. And uh, last episode, we built a town centre, and you guys really enjoyed this. Um, it was did really well, actually, uh, for a modular build. And i uh, just kind of get a little look around it now. Uh, transport hub's really busy. Got some people using the metros to switch different lines. Yeah, the green city's little block is all kind of fleshed out and grown now. Little uh, hot dog van using the dirt path. And, uh, yeah, we also had an idea as well. You could change this out for an actual dirt path instead of a dirt road. Great idea. Feel free to do that. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's really cute. Uh, and a uh, couple of you guys in the Discord used it as well, which is uh, really nice to see. And uh, today's build is actually coming from the Discord as well. Uh, you guys have asked for kind of a business park. And um, it's been something I've been meaning to do for a while, so that's what we're going to do today. So if you're kind of thinking where can you implement this build, um, then a good option uh, would be kind of on the edge of a suburb, right? So say for example, if you did use the town centre, or you just kind of have some generic, unimpressive suburb that you have somewhere in your city, I'm pretty sure most people do, uh, then this can be a nice way to kind of get away from that. You know, you're kind of bored of expanding that suburban pattern. And you're ready to do something a little different. So let's try and do something with this idea. So I'm going to be using my two lane road with grass. And I'm just going to find kind of a main road like this. That is kind of empty on one side. So it kind of has this suburbia on one. And nothing on this side. And you can see where we've been experimenting today with the dead grass. Uh, so we're going to come out by a distance of 300 on each side. And then just draw them together in the middle. So we're leaving three tiles. Uh, you can make this as wide um, or as narrow as you like, uh, but I'm just going to kind of go from this junction uh, from the main road, which is a distance of 30 tiles or 210 in measurement cost. So, uh, 30 tiles right here. So, you know, adjust this bit of the build to the size that you need it to be. Okay, then with these two nodes here, which are intervals of 10, we are going to draw out. Um, this time with our two lane road with trees. Uh, we're going to draw out from here by a distance of 1200. And then from this one as well. So the zoning tiles are perfectly together right here, as you can see. Two pep. Then put them together. So for right now, these roads are just uh, temporary. We won't be keeping these in. Uh, because the real roads are going to be right here. So we're going to come back to this road here, and then just to the left of this snap node, we're going to come across by two nodes, and we're going to draw up to the top again, leaving a distance of two tiles between the two treed roads. And then we're going to do the same thing on this side as well. So your bird's eye view, you'll be having something that looks a little bit like that right now. And it is going somewhere, I promise. <laughs> Uh, okay, so we're going to come out a little further from here as well. And then just hook those together. So we keep in that distance of two tiles. Uh, kind of all the way around this thing, right? It's two tiles deep. Uh, all the way around you go. Super. Then what we're going to do is we're going to come into our terraforming. And we're going to grab our shift terrain. Now, if you're playing with a better landscaping mod like me, you will have three little icons down here, uh, kind of for your tree, for your brush size, and then a little kind of interval icon as well to um, show the intensity. You want it fairly low intensity because we don't want this to be too deep. So I'll bring mine down to maybe like 25. Let's make a little hole. We're going to come to our level terrain, and we're going to right click the bottom of that hole. And then we're going to push it out. So you can probably guess what we're making here, right? <laughs> you can make this deeper or shallower if you want. It's really up to you. Just make sure that it's pushed out to all four corners of these roads. Kind of as much as you can get it. Okay. So you have something, kind of a big hole in the middle. Then we're going to delete these roads right here. So we're deleting those uh, kind of inner grass roads. Then just right click this bottom road. And we're just going to draw out a little bit. And we're going to do this on kind of each side. 
We're still using the level terrain tool. I'm just going to trim up some of these edges. Now, if you are playing with a better landscaping mod, you will have access to water sources where you can just drop this in. However, if you on console, uh, you will need to use the fresh water outlet from the Natural Disasters DLC. Uh, so we'll we'll drop that in. Now, unfortunately, these are quite industrial looking, but there are a couple of things you can do to try and help them try and help them blend in. So once your fresh water outlet is in and he's kind of filled up to his capacity, you're going to want to delete him and to make sure that your game is paused so the water doesn't disappear. But it's not an instantaneous thing, but you don't want it to drain away. Um, then we're going to put in our keys. So we're going to snap onto the road guidelines of this road right here. And we can just begin to draw ourselves in a little bit of a key. We'll come down to about here, here, and here. So the key goes in no problem because we did that road thing. It basically just kind of lines up the shores perfectly for the key. Because they're essentially snapping to like invisible road guidelines, if that makes sense. And um, you now you can just kind of plop them in right there. And we want to do come ahead and grab your slope terrain tool. And then we just want to make sure that we kind of take away some of the kind of harsh dirt edges that are lining up against the keys. Uh, just push those back in using your slope tool. And you will eventually just uh, kind of get rid of them all. Again, stick to fairly low intensities with your terraforming when you're doing kind of very small micro stuff like this. Uh, you'll just kind of thank yourself for it in the long run. Uh, so now we've removed the fresh water outlet from this, this water will slowly drain away. So you know, like I said, if you're playing a better landscaping mod, just use the water tool to place this water in. However, console friends, uh, you can then add in your water outlet again. And then kind of make this thing as symmetrical as you want. Like it is quite an industrial looking asset if we just kind of line it up in the middle here. And then again I'll, I'll hook him into the water pipes. So you know, it's not too bad from the, from the right angle. But you know, it's kind of got these grids. It's the only way you're going to get water in. So you just kind of have to, you guys have to deal with it. Um, if you want it to kind of stop, you know, then just come on and turn it off. And it'll stop pumping so you know it's a way to get an artificial lake into your city so yeah we'll, we'll kind of leave it at that <laughs> rather than keep talking about it uh, okay then we're going to come ahead and grab um the official park from our unique buildings it's under level three and it's one of the first ones uh, we're going to place this right in the middle here you can see we have the official park and we have six zoning tiles either side of this right here Oh no, don't grow, you're not allowed. Okay. Uh, the water will kind of stop having these waves in it as well. Once it's kind of stabilized and stopped filling up from the outlet, it will uh, it will calm down. It's not gonna be like, like the perfect storm, you know? <laughs> uh, okay, then uh, we're gonna come ahead and grab some of our unique buildings again. We're gonna come into the content creator packs and then we're gonna use some of the, uh, some of the Japan stuff alongside this one right here. So it's really kind of up to you which ones you want to use. Kind of the ones at the lower end uh, look really good. Uh, the small office building will work tremendously well here. Uh, it's kind of got this little car park decal on the side of it. And it's just a really nice looking asset. If you haven't picked up the Japan Content Creator Pack, uh, yeah, it is, a, it is a really good investment. We can also look at the, which one was this? Uh, district office building. This is a... Uh, Another really good looking asset, super kind of office vibes about it. I know we will be integrating some office zone into this thing as well. Uh, yeah, so that's kind of it for the flanks. And with your office zoning, if you want to, you can make this an IT cluster. If you want it to be a little bit kind of higher density, then by all means do that. Um, but I'm not really looking, because it's kind of on the edge of a suburb, you know, I don't want. Um, I don't kind of want the the IT cluster type high rise buildings right next to this, so try to avoid those if you can. Uh, okay, so kind of this is what we have right now. We've got kind of our general shape and formula in, and then we'll begin to kind of add some zonings in. So with the regular office zoning, um, 
there are a couple of little assets which I'm kind of looking to generate here so we'll draw out some different size shapes. I tend to find with your office zoning tool you get the better look at assets staying away from these kind of shapes. You know, those kind of they generate some weird looking buildings and we want this to be quite uniform, very kind of modern and sophisticated. Uh, so we're not going to be using kind of any odd shapes, kind of 4x4s and 4x3s are what you want to keep looking out for here. And then really kind of, kind of from these two points heading out to the left and the right you can do a variety of patterns with them. Um, so I might come out by 5 here and then come down by the side of this one here. Then again, there's uh, some really good opportunities to get in some more plazas here. Go ahead and throw in uh, maybe a Paradox Plaza on one of the corners. And again, I can see I've got some more zoning opportunities here. So I can maybe get a 4x4 four four in right there. So really plan your zoning around the assets. You know, don't just kind of draw in your roads and then, okay, right, you know, I'm done now. Uh, let's have some office zoning in, my office park's done. You know, you'll really thank yourself in the long run for kind of taking your time to map out these little zoning squares. And once we come to detail this thing up, uh, you know, you'll, you will really just kind of appreciate it. So we can maybe do like a similar pattern on this side. So if we came out by 550 this side, we'll do the same again. We'll come out by 550. And maybe I want to draw the road directly behind this building this time. Okay. Maybe actually let's bring that up a little bit shorter. And there's some more kind of fun things we can do here. So if you want to continue to use your unique buildings here, then you know by all means do that. There's a couple of plazas you can use in here. Right there, the Lazarette Plaza would work nicely at the head of this thing as well. You could go for Statue of Industry as well if you wanted to. If you wanted to take more like an industrial spin on this, this would work here nicely as well. But there really is a whole different bunch of buildings. The Disaster Memorial is also a really good looking plaza. So feel free to throw that in there as well. But have a little scan through your unique buildings. There might be something that you haven't used yet. And that you're like, yeah, you know, this would be uh, this would be perfect. If you're going a little bit higher density, uh, you could throw in a grand library into this thing as well. This will look really nice kind of in front of the little the little lake here. So anyway, do that. Kind of find something that you like. And then uh, we'll, we'll kind of come back here and see what we're working with. So I'm going to switch back now to my two lane road with grass. And I'm going to box in our official park. Just like this, okay? So it's just a perfect little box around it. And then we're going to come back into our unique buildings here. And we're going to come back into the uh, Japan Content Creator stuff. And we're going to carry on using a few of these little office buildings. So we can get a local register office in here. I might want to put this... Um, maybe let's have this here. Maybe kind of up along the main road along this side. Place it in that way. Kind of build layers of height as you move it into the park. You know, it doesn't all have to be kind of the same thing. Uh, and then maybe go for like a, a, a department store here if you wanted to. You know, there is just have a look through the assets and you'll more than likely find one that you haven't used yet. You, think, you know what, this is, a, this is the perfect opportunity to use it. We kind of get that in right opposite the official part, right? Uh, and then some little detailing uh, tricks that you guys want to do with this. We'll let the game play now. And uh, we'll make sure that everyone's going to be watered up and happy. Is power not sinking through here? Here it is. Uh, some little detailing tips. Um, with this space that we have at the front um, of the the plaza right here and um, perfect opportunity to get some paths in so kind of from crossroads right here line it up in the middle and then to bring it down with a part life path and then do the same on this side as well so this is one of the assets I'm looking to generate this right here this is perfect it's a nice little corner building and don't forget, if you are happy with them, then make them historical. Otherwise, they'll grow bigger and bigger and kind of take away uh, from that look that you were initially happy with. We will get a little bit of flooding just as the water kind of stabilizes within the key. And you can see now that we're getting full. So I might just want to shut this off. 
No, it's unfortunately we don't have the water tool uh, in the unmodded game, but we can make do. And then coming to your city park stuff, also a good shout as well. Uh, park plazas will work lovely in this build. Uh, throw in a couple of park plazas, kind of either side of our um, our actual kind of recognised plaza here. You know, just experiment with different assets and find a layout and a design that works for you. You can go for some kind of symmetry at the head. You know, it's really kind of... It's a template, isn't it? I should really rename this series to uh, City Skylines Modular Templates. <laughs> As opposed to following the build. Uh, so let's just snap to our angle. We make it a lot easier to kind of line up with the paths here. And we'll bring this until we intersect with the path. And then we'll bring it down this side as well. So just box these paths in with a little bit of fence. And we'll come all the way over to this one. And then the same again on this side. If you really wanted to, you could make this a little deeper and turn it into an actual city park. Um, that might be a nice idea. And then we'll have it up along there as well. So when you've got these kind of um, boxed off little grass areas, perfect opportunity to go ahead and mess about with some detail and ideas that you've picked up. Um, do kind of a symmetrical tree pattern if you want, make it overgrown. You could kind of place in some little rock features around here maybe. So we get to keep spinning them around and changing the asset occasionally so it's not kind of super, uh, super symmetrical. And uh, do it kind of that way, or you know, you could go for that very kind of stereotypical uh, patterned, patterned tree. Let's go ahead and grab like one of these little little sugar maples. These are the same ones that are on the part path. And then you could do just a simple tree pattern across there. So, you know, experiment with that. I'll kind of show you a few different ideas when we come to the, uh, the detailing time lapse about what you can do with this area. Also as well, just to help kind of flesh out this lake a little bit, definitely run some paths up alongside it. Uh, just snap to your grid and your angle. You, know, you can use any path for this if you want. Um, it's really kind of up to you as to which one you want. Uh, and you can just kind of line these up with the corner grids. Just like that. So it's kind of open to interpretation. And you could draw in a little box like that as well maybe. And then possibly even one around the back as well. So you know obviously it's kind of a pointless path because the the paths are right next to the, the pavement. You know they can walk on the road uh, but it's a nice border to surround the lake. It's another little layer of detail right. So we're getting some more of these assets in right now. So, you know it's this kind of stuff that I'm looking for for my business park. It's the financial news buildings and the Angry Clans mobile games even though that says uh, the Banhammer Bank. <laughs> I've never noticed that name before. That's a good one. What's this one? The Law Accounting. Uh, but that's going to be a good place, guys, to go ahead and start detailing this thing up. Uh, what I'm also going to do is I'm going to carry on expanding this suburban pattern around the business park so you can kind of see how it fits in with uh, the rest of the suburban idea so it isn't just tacked on to the edge of a suburb and then there's nothing else around it. Uh, so, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll be right back.
right guys, we went over kind of what I've done before we kind of jump into the outro charge and check this thing out at night time. I've uh, just done some very really kind of basic tree patterns in front of the, the actual park itself with some kind of sporadic rock placement and a little bit of overgrowth. I uh, integrated one of the nature reserve paths so there was like a little bit of like a mini park and dirt kind of thing behind this. You could, I, I mentioned it as well, you can integrate a city park into this as well if you want. Uh, to help draw more people to the area. And then you could actually kind of charge people to enter through all these gates as well with side gates. But uh, that might be a little bit overkill in my opinion. <laughs> um, I moved kind of the the, uh, the wider lower building to the head of the park and then shifted this one over here. I just think it serves as kind of more as a better corner building as opposed to uh, lying at the head of the park in front of the water. Which I think this one um, just works tremendously well for it in front of the official park. It really does kind of tie it all together. Uh, you know, flanked it with a couple of park plazas as well. Also added in a post office down here too. I kind of brought the road to a little dead end here, and there's there's paths running everywhere through this. Uh, these are just zoo paths with decorations. Use any path you want. Um, you know, they kind of come in between all the little buildings here. It's all very green and lush and open. You know, this is certainly a better way of using office zoning, I think. Uh, it's a chance to use unique buildings, to use kind of plazas. You know, don't forget to integrate the plazas, just the regular vanilla ones into into your office parks as well. Alright guys, that is going to do it for today. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed, a like below is always appreciated. Equally as much if you didn't enjoy it, please feel free to leave a dislike as well. This is a much better way, in my opinion, of using office zoning alongside a couple of unique buildings. Uh, it really helps break that suburban pattern, hopefully now you can see as we've surrounded it with more suburbia. And it helps create a nice workplace for all those sims to come to. And uh, you know, just break the pattern, which is the, the goal behind these modular build series. Uh, but yeah, I'm super happy with it. If you can think of any assets or amendments that I have forgotten or missed out on, uh, feel free to drop them in the comments so other people can see them. But otherwise, that is enough from me. I want to thank you all so much for watching. And as always, enjoy the rest of your day. <laughs>